Coming up next, Frank and Mary here in Framingham with your co-hosts, Grace O'Donnell and me, Art Bergeron. Our guest today is Glenda Thomas, a member of the, the uh, Framingham Council on Aging. Uh, don't miss it. Welcome to this episode of Frank and Mary in Framingham. I'm Grace O'Donnell, Director of Elder Services at the Callahan Center. And I'm her friend, Art Bergeron. My day job is as an elder law attorney at Myrick O'Connell, where we are all around. We, we, I have offices in Westboro, we're in Worcester, we're in Boston. But this is not about my day job. This is about my friends, Frank and Mary. If you've seen any of my presentations, you know that Frank and Mary's goal in life is to live in their house until they die and be buried in the backyard. And if you identify with that, then this show is for you. The point of this show is to help you know the people that you need to know and the programs that you need to know about in order to stay right here in Framingham for the rest of your life. So my co-host, Grace O'Donnell, who just has been on the Senior Center forever at the Callahan Center, finds all these great guests and has been doing this now for years and keeps finding new ones. So, so Grace, who is our guest today? Hi, Arthur. Our guest today is Glenda Thomas. She's a member of the Council on Aging Board, appointed by the mayor, and she's going to speak to us today about the Framingham Senior Heroes Awards. Thank you so much for coming on, Ms. Thomas. We really appreciate your presence. Thank you. I'm so happy to be here today. How's everybody doing? You're doing well, Glenda. How are you? Good, good. So let me tell you a little bit about the Framingham Senior Heroes Award. You know, during COVID, we heard a lot about people being locked in and especially seniors, you know, they couldn't, they, if they were in assisted livings, they were locked into their rooms. If they were living in their homes, they were separated from their families. And during that point, that time, I said, wouldn't it be nice to give our seniors something to look forward to? So I've been a member of Framingham for over 40 years. And through you haven't been years, a senior. You haven't been a senior for forty years. That that that's you've been here a long time. That's a long time. That's a long time. And you know, living here in Framingham, I know that Framingham is a community. And you know, watching the t it go from a town to a city, where we had town meetings, and you know, we'll hear all about the town meetings, and they would go on for weeks at times. So a lot of people, you know, family members have grown and passed on the baton to their younger, to their children, you know, who's still working on the better half of the community. And I said, let's give our seniors something to look forward to. And that's how the Framingham Senior Heroes Award came about. First year, you know, we had four candidates who were awesome. I kind of look at this as becoming the unsung heroes or our hidden gems. Mm -hmm. And we learn so much about our community through the to the people that are being nominated and even the people that are being awarded. The second year, I'm like, wow, we'll survive, you know, so it keeps growing. And now we're entering our third year. Next week, we will launch the nomination for the 2023 Framingham Senior Heroes Award. We'll be looking for four individuals between culture and arts, social services, health and public services. So, you know, we'll turn around, look at your neighbors, look at your family members who've been here for years, talk to them because you don't know necessarily what they have contributed to the growth of our community over the years. And That's you the learn. interesting thing I found, Glenda, when we were reading through the various nominations that came in. In some cases, some of the people reading those nominations had no idea 
the accomplishments of some of the people that were being nominated. So I think it, it was a terrific thing that you started. And it's, I think it's a great way for the community to take pride in its own members. So I'd, I'd like you to tell people a bit more, like as far as the age of people who are, can be nominated and do they need to be a resident of Framingham and things like that. So it's 60 plus. You have to be at least 60 years old. Um, we initially, I was thinking of the people that have been more in the retired side of our community, not necessarily still working, but it's the 60 plus uh, is the cutoff for the age. And yes, you have to be a resident. Many times people will go, I got a perfect candidate to nominate. And they'll start and I said, do they live in Framingham? No, but they work in Framingham. No, nope, they got to be a resident of Framingham. Because this is going to our Framingham residents. All right. So that is an important key um, thing there. And then there's a team. We have a committee who goes through the process of reviewing the nominations. And as you said, Grace. And Grace is on the committee with me. We learn so much about the community. We learn so much about the people in the community. And... Again, it's, it's the award is given to people who value diversity and inclusivity. If you look at the history of Framingham, Framingham was built based upon a, a very diverse population. And it continues to have a very diverse population. And I know we all live in our communities and sometimes we may not see the diversity as much. But if you look around our schools, look at our youth you will see the diversity. Um, look at downtown Framingham now. You know, the growth that we're seeing there is a lot of it through, I'm gonna say, a diverse community. So that's what we're all about. That's what we look for. And sometimes people may not even realize that through their volunteer efforts, it's, it's only through your volunteer efforts that they have really significantly contributed to the diversity. So think about what you've done. You know, you might have to share the stories with your family members so that they can even nominate you. But also it is up to the person who's nominating an individual to tell us why they think that they are deserving of this award. Mm -hmm. We as committee members cannot interpret. We can't read minds. So you've got to tell us why you think this person is so deserving of the award. So tell us their story through your eyes. And then we will go off and we interview. Once we've identified the individuals that's going to be the recipients of the award, we go off, we interview them, we create a little bio. And those bios are so impactful. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I was talking to someone the other day and I said, not only are we trying to identify people who have contributed, but we also hope that it encourages others to contribute to the community and look at the community as a whole. Mm -hmm. yeah. so, so can I ask a question? It, it, once again, if I'm, if, I'm, if I'm listening to this or I'm hearing this, and I'm kind of thinking about here are some people that might be really interested. It would be interesting, I think, to get a sense of like who's who is who has been named in the last couple of years. I'm I, I'm just I'm just curious because I think it's a it, it because it gives I think for a lot of times people will say, oh well, well, you know, I I don't want to be I'm not that great, you know. So many of these volunteers like they're just great, you know, um, but they don't have a sense of it. So could could you give you know a sense of like who has who has won in the past if if you if you if you could right I, I, if if you want Glenda I could I could pop in on the the most recent year unless you you have them right handy so let's tag team a little bit sure all right so I'm one of the people that I'm what comes to mind is Ann Sullivan some of you may know of Ann some of you may not but I think Ann probably worked quietly in the background cleaning up the south side of Framingham from the chemical spills so that the children that were going to school were not having to go to school in a hazard health environment. Wow. 
Okay. So, you know, so that's where health comes in. We want to make sure the community is free of pollutants and, you know, that we can live and have healthy, drink healthy water, et cetera. That's one. Grace, I'll let you. This most recent year, we had the president of Framingham State University, former president, I believe by now, but at the time, uh, President Javier Ceballos, and he was nominated for the efforts that he did in preserving the Danforth Museum so that students in the community would have an opportunity to uh, recognize the richness of Framingham's history. And the Danforth name has been a staple within Framingham. So if we were to have lost that, that art, the Danforth Museum, it would have been a big loss to our community. And also from the first year, we had Father Don Pachuda, who worked very much with people who were struggling with homelessness and food insecurity, and he continues to do that. He has done that for decades, and it was just such a pleasure to be able to recognize him for those efforts. And then I'm sure some of you have heard of Herb Chasen. Herb Chasen has done so much for the youth in our community with hoops and homework. Hoops and homework? Hoops and homework. He has a center um, on the south side, but it's surround activities, um, tutoring, learning after school. So hoops and homework provide a great foundation. You know, it was hoping to take kids off the street and giving them a safe place where they could come and they could learn and they could play. Mm -hmm. And it started off with, I think, uh, renovating one of the basketball courts or playgrounds so that they will have a neighborhood playground to play the sports. So hoops and homeworks. And so, and so you're suggesting that th these are people who have, have may have done stuff in the past, but may very well also be doing stuff in the present. They may be actively yeah. con continuing to really be involved, right? Yes, yes. In, in fact, a, a recent example of that, Arthur, is Kathy McCarthy, who has been a volunteer with the Medical Reserve Corps for a very long time, as well as having been a town meeting member and serving on so many committees. And she continues to do that work. She did a terrific effort regarding uh, having other languages available for the COVID vaccine clinics so that people who uh, were immigrants were still able to get themselves protected. So that, again, we always are trying to make sure that these volunteer efforts are somehow reflecting that people are valuing diversity and that they're encouraging more inclusivity in the community. Right. Yeah. Right. Because there's such a large pool of folks, right? And, right. and and as you say, that so often they're just unrecognized, right? And they're and 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 they, and they are the cornerstones of the community. It isn't the buildings, no. you know. It's not the buildings. It's not. It's 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 always about the people. Yeah, yeah. I was listening to one of the meetings last night on uh, city meetings, and I was listening to a youth. And I say youth. I'm talking about 2030s, talking about how they grew up in the community. And now they want to continue to give to their community. Um, Janet LaBruno is going, I coached you at baseball. Okay. Um, that's all about the community. And, you know, and that's where that baton continues to be passed on. And recognizing those efforts of people that were there when I probably came to Framingham 40 years ago. Right for the efforts that they have done to get us to where we are today. So um, there's a lot of people out there and it's just getting the word out and asking people to think about, you know, the people, they're not doing the work because they want to be recognized. All right. They're doing it because they have a passion for their community. They're embracing that community. They want to make sure that everyone is included. But at the end of the day, I'm sure everyone is surprised and very genuinely grateful to be honored, to be recognized. 
I know we all, we don't do what we do to be recognized, but at the end of the day, when someone else congratulates mm -hmm. us, that makes us feel good. Yeah. So it was to bring that feeling to give people, as I said, at the time they were shut in, mm -hmm. to give them something that they felt they could look forward to. And to see this now becoming an annual event is even more rewarding because it shows that we care about our community. We care about our seniors who have gotten us here. And that's what's really important. And I think it's also a, a great way just to show how vibrant seniors of any age still are. I, I think some people who don't work with seniors like the the four of us do, uh, are less aware of how much they can still offer, how much we still have to learn from them. And I think this is a really terrific way. And I thank you, Glenda, for coming up with the idea of this award program so that more people can be shown in the spotlight. And as you say, hopefully more people might say, not for the sake of getting an award, but gee, you know, that was terrific to hear about all those efforts that person went to and how it helped the community, maybe I could do some little piece of that myself. So I, I, I hope as you're thinking that it will continue to snowball in a good way. Yes. Yeah. You know, I know. I'm sorry. I know you folks are very, are kind of right, right kind of in the, kind of in the middle of it. Cause and you know, you're telling me that the application process is starting, but I know once again, if I were watching, I say, so how is this going to work exactly? Like, you know, when is the debt, you know, the classic, the, the classic prosaic questions, when's the deadline? How does all that work? How does it end? Does it end with an event? You know, how, yeah, how, how does all that work? So for the past couple, so for this year, the application process or nomination process will start December 12th and it will go to February 3rd. And for the past couple of years, we've had a small gathering at the Callahan Center to recognize the awardees. Mm -hmm. And that's what we will continue to do this year. And, um, you know, every each awardee gets the opportunity to say something and you learn even more about them when they're talking. So it's not a big, it hasn't become a big dinner or anything. We tend to have coffee and tea and cookies or donuts or whatever, but it's all about getting together, recognizing them. And we've had uh, our state reps have been a part of the city council, the mayor. They are part of this event so that the awardees feel like it is a recognition from the city. Yes. And as, as in addition to our state reps, our own senator, yes. Karen Spilka, has also been involved with the, the program as well. That all sounds great. And sounds and so uh, we will have information available at the end of the show as far as a link that people can use to fill out an application online. If someone doesn't have access to a computer, they can get a hard copy of the uh, form by calling the Callahan Center or emailing us, and they could either drop it off to the Callahan or hand deliver it. But we're hoping that more people will do the online form because it's a lot easier to process in that right. way. So we're encouraging that among people. Right. That's all good. Mm -hmm. And and so and and so by the way, if we have if we have any extra time, I, I'd also be curious. We've never had someone from the Council on Aging on, right? I realize of all really? of all of our guests. Wow, yes. that's, so I, I, so that's I'd be that's amazing. interested, kind of from your perspective, Glenda, kind of now that you've kind of we'd like to think that we're on the tail end of COVID, you know, like how did, like, how did that all work out and where are things, and where are things going from your perspective from here? Cause I know I, you know, I, I Grace, of course I see Grace once a month because we're always talking to new guests, but we're always talking about other things or we're often talking about other things other than like the council on aging. So I'm just curious. And how long have you been on? How long have you been on the council? Um, I think I've been on it now for about, Three, four years. Yes. Um, I think you've been on longer. Haven't, haven't <laughs> it been longer? I, I, I don't, I don't it's know. Be, it's at least four years. It's at least years. Like, it's at least like such years. a fabric of, of the organization. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's at least four years I've been on the on the board. And, um, you know, it's, 
one of the biggest topics that continue to come to us um, has been housing. And so we don't have an answer, um, but we that's one of the topics that we are constantly looking at. You know, we got the band for the Callahan Center a few years ago, and that has become a very valuable means of transportation to our seniors in the community. Um, so we are looking at, and we talk about what are some of the issues that our seniors are facing? And then how can we help to either elevate those issues so that they are heard by um, our city officials that can help to um, hopefully over time resolve, come up with a solution for them. And um, it's just getting the word out to people about the Callahan Center or the senior center and what activities are available, what resources are available to them. And I, but I guess that's a challenge is to, the, to be t trying not only to be continuing to have the Callahan Center itself really grow and be the center of activity, but also to be using that as the way to address some of those larger concerns. Because it, as you say, I think that's a, that's one of, every, everybody's, everybody's aware that there are housing issues Many people don't tend to think of, though, the, the inordinate impact that that tends to have on seniors um, because of the nature of their incomes, because you've got seniors who are, you know, shrinking in family size and therefore often needing to, you know, to restructure. And, and it's a it's really hard. It's really hard. But how, and, and, but trying to do, and the seniors. At least from my perspective, tend to be an attractive group politically, right? So if, if you know, lo looking at the ho housing for seniors, you know, may make may be easier to deal with um, than looking for housing, you know, kind of more, more broadly because they're seniors. Well, I wish they don't the look case. like, oh, well, geez, you know, oh, you know, you know, we're not talking about wild parties and, blah, 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 you know, these are seniors who could yeah. not like seniors, right? No, I wish that was the case though, but housing is an issue. Um, for all of us here in Framingham, um, but you're right. Uh, I mean, Art, that you can look at it from the standpoint. Some of our seniors are becoming house poor just because of the taxes, right. you know, um, and that you, you're living on a limited income as you get older. But those are things that we are trying to look at, and we don't have answers, but you know, we're trying to at least bring them forward. And that's, and that's what we do as the board. We try to identify what are the issues that our seniors are dealing with and package that so we can bring it forward. But I'm looking forward to every, so I'm gonna step back for a second. If anybody's interested in joining the Council on Aging, then please go online. We just got three people appointed last night, um, but go online um, to the city website and look for Council on Aging and fill out an application. And we will have the um, Framingham Senior Heroes Award link will be on at the city website coming up, as well as what Grace said that, you know, the Council of Aging, call them and they will send you the link or form, whichever is easier for you. We know that some people are not as, um, equipped as far as being online. So they like the paper copies better. So we will accommodate that as well. That's great. And, 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 and just going to the, your, 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 your pitch for council on aging members. Can you tell people who might have an interest, but might think, uh, you know, the classic question when you're, when you're thinking about volunteering is, you know, if once I'm in, you know, how bad is this going to be? Right. So, I mean, not, you know, you know, how many, so can you give people a sense of, from your own perspective now, you've been on for several years, you know, what's the commitment? Are the meetings, are meetings monthly, are meetings at night? Are there subcommittee? What, you know, what, if I were interested in being involved, what does that mean? So, you know, I'm a person that you always, you make it what you want to make it and you get as involved as you want to get involved. All right. So from the Council on Aging meetings, they are once a month for a couple hours from 1.30 to 3.30. 
on the second Tuesday of every month. Mm -hmm. Except for August. August. Thank you. Except for August. And then there are subcommittees. But that's where, what's your passion? So when you say, you know, how do I know if I'm a person that will enjoy being on this? If you're working with seniors, if you're interacting with them, or you understand some of the resources that may be available, there's different, you know, just your your life experiences. If it's gearing you towards helping seniors, then that's the reason for you to apply to be on the Council of Aging. And it's what you bring to the table and your energy to how you can help the council on aging grow and be effective. So, you know, if you're looking to come and be a lump on the log, then no. No. maybe we're not the right group. <laughs> maybe you should stay watching TV. Maybe you should just stay in front of the TV. Right? So Glenda, we, we just have a couple of minutes left. Is there anything else about the Framingham Senior Heroes Awards that you want to make sure that people know um, in terms of... So the Framingham Senior Heroes Award, again, to summarize, you got to be 60 plus, you got to be a resident of Framingham, look for people that have contributed it through diversity and inclusivity in the areas of healthcare, public services, social services, arts and culture, and just look for those unsung heroes and bring those individuals forward. We're looking forward to this becoming a annual event. It has so far, the last three years now. Yep, yeah, this is the third year. So, you know, we as a community needs to need to have something that we embrace. And this is one of the things that I feel that we're beginning to embrace now. So hopefully, Glenda, will make you, your appearance a regular piece of this show also. So maybe maybe that's one of the things that we're going to do at the end of the year is, right, just kind of talk about this is a really, really, this is really important. This is just really important. So th thank you so much, Glenda, for being willing to be on the show. Thank you, Grace. Gra Grace does this every month. I have learned, met more, you know, really interesting people from being on my own show, you know, with Grace. <laughs> It's just, it's really terrific. So we really, really appreciate it. And once again, folks, so don't assume that, you know, it, this is a wonderful way for you to be honoring somebody and for you to also be helping the community by getting people, by seeing this, to be wanting to be involved themselves. So this is a wonderful thing. Grace, thank you so much. Glenda, thank you so much. And folks, we'll look forward to seeing you on the next uh, installment of Frank and Mary here in Framingham. Thank you.